interiors. Uh -huh. Some of this movie is like it is. It's it's stunning. There's no 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 person in the world. Oh, I'm glad you like it. That's great. Well, yeah. <laughs> no, okay. really. really. Um, was part of you scared a little bit about going that far down the dim line? No, not even no. no. <laughs> well, you know, one of the things you learn. I mean, because the latitude of the stocks back then was like. Yeah, but I know what they were. Right. And the, and the, <laughs> and the, well, one of the problems is everybody's yeah. guessing with what. You know, one of the first things I did is I pick a stock to shoot the movie with, right? Right. Okay, and I shoot this series of tests on this stock, which ran from normal all the way down to three stops under and three stops over. And anyway, to make a long story short, you <clears throat> find out what the limits of the film stock are that you're, and the limits of the print stock you are, and that's how you calculate something. You have to know what a stop and a half under looks like on the screen when you do it, because you can't tell when you're standing there. Right. You know, it's your... Problem is, your eyes make adjustment. They compensate for it. Film does it. You have to make it do what you want. So right. if you don't know how to make it do what you want, then you know, blah. So it's the same thing with all low key or high key or normal. You have to know what it's going to look like if you underexpose it by two or one or don't or normal or whatever you do to it.